Welcome to one and all. Today I am going to discuss carpet accounting for second week third semester. Unit number one issue of shares. First of all, we should know what is a share. A share is defined as a share in the share capital of the company and includes stock. Share capital of the company is collected by issue of shares. Share is one of the unit into which total capital is divided. The person who owns the share is called a shareholder. Next, we will see the kinds of shares. The different kinds of shares which can be raised by the companies are equity shares, preference shares, and default shares. Equity share means it is a share which is not a preference share, it is called equity share. The whole of the profit of a company is entitled to the shareholders after paying a fixed dividend to preference shareholders. They does not get a fixed rate of dividend. They will get back their capital only after paying preference shareholders. Sweet equity shares. It is issued to employees or directors of a company at a discounted rate. Issued for consideration other than cash. It must follow these conditions. First one, authorized by special resolution in general meeting. Second one, number, price, consideration if any and classes should be specified in the resolution. Third one, the company must complete one year. Fourth one, equity share of those company must be listed in Veganist Stock Exchange. Next, we will move to the preference shares. Preference shares are those shares which carry with them preferential right for their holders. That is, preferential right as to fixed rate of dividend and as to repayment of capital at the time of winding up of the company. That's, then we will see the features of preference shares. It carries fixed rate of dividend, priority as to payment of dividend, preference as to repayment of capital during liquidation of the company. Generally, preference shareholders do not have voting rights. According to the company's Amendment Act 1988, the preference shares are redeemable and the maximum period for which they can be issued is 10 years. Next, we will see the kinds of preference shares. On the basis of accumulation of dividend. First one, cumulative preference shares. They are those shares on which the dividend at a fixed rate goes on accumulating till it is all paid. Non-cumulative preference shares. These are those shares on which the dividend does not accumulate. On the basis of participation. First, we will have participating preference shares. This type of shares are allowed to participate in surplus profit during the lifetime of the company and surplus asset during winding up. Non-participating shares. These shares are not entitled to participate in surplus profit. Dividend at fixed rate is given. Next, on the basis of conversion. Convertible preference shares. The owner of these shares have the option to convert their preference shares into equity shares as per the terms of issue. Non-convertible preference shares. The owner of these shares do not have any right of converting their shares into equity shares on the basis of redemption. Redeemable preference shares. These are to be purchased back by the company after a certain period as per the terms of issue. Irredeemable preference shares. These are not to be purchased back by the company during its lifetime. Then we will see the status of preference shares. If articles of association are silent, preference shares will be presumed to be cumulative, non participating irredeemable and non-convertible. Next, we we'll move to the third type, deferred shares. Deferred shares are those shares on which the payment of dividend and the capital at the time of winding up of a company is made after money is paid in full on preference shares and equity shares. As per the provision of the Companies Act 1956, no public can, company can issue deferred shares. The features of deferred shares. Rate of dividend is not fixed. It depends upon the availability of profit under the discretion of the board of directors. Dividend is paid after payment of dividend on equity and preference shares. At the time of liquidation, capital on these shares is returned after capital is repaid on both preference and equity shares. Next, we will move to the definition of a company. A company can be defined as an artificial person, invisible, intangible, created by or under law with a discrete legal entity, perpetual succession and a common seal. Citation needed. It is not affected by the death insanity or insolvency of an individual member. Then we see the features of a company. First one, incorporation. The certificate of incorporation of a company is issued by ROC as per guideline given in the Companies Act 2013. The law considered a company as an artificial legal person. Then second one, separate legal entity. A company has a separate legal entity from its owners, that is shareholders. Then third one, perpetual existence. A company has perpetual existence not affected by the death, lunacy or insolvency of its shareholders. 
it can be wind up only by the law. Then fourth one, common seal. Every company has its own common seal which act as the official signature of the company. Then next one, transferability of share. The shares of a public company are transferable. Then limited liability. The liability of a shareholders is limited to the unpaid value of his shares. For example, the face value of a share in the company is rupees 10 and the shareholders has already paid rupees 8 per share. He can be called upon to pay not more than rupees 2 per share. Then separation of management from ownership. Shareholders are the true owners of a company, but usually the number of shareholders is quite large and as such it is neither possible nor disabled for each member to take part in the day to day management of the company. Then we just classify the types of company on the basis of incorporation, chartered companies, statutory company and registered companies. Under the chartered companies, the company is incorporated under a special royal charter issued by the king or head of the state. Example, the East India Company, Bank of England, Hudson Bay Company. Then statutory company. It is established by a special act of the parliament to state legislature. May not use limiter. Example, RBI, IFCA, IDB, LIC, etc. Registered company. Formed and registered under the Indian Companies Act 1956. Example, Infosys, IPRO, etc. On the basis of liability. Limited companies and unlimited companies. Limited companies. Classify into two categories limited by shares and limited by guarantee. Limited by shares, liability of the members is limited to the extent of face value of the shares held by them. Next, limited by guarantee. Liability of member is limited to the fixed amount which they have guaranteed on. Then, unlimited companies, liability of member is unlimited. They have to pay the liabilities of the company from their personal asset. Then, on the basis of number of members, private companies, public companies, introduced in Act 2013. Under the private companies, restrict the right of the members to transfer shares. Limit the number of members to 200 Act 2013, excluding past or present employees of the company. Prohibit any invitation to the public to subscribe for its shares, debungers and public deposits. Under the public company, a public company is one which is not a private company. To form a company, at least 7 members and there is no limit. As to use the word limited at the end of its name. Then next one introduced in Act 2013, one person company and another one is dormant company. On the basis of ownership and control, government companies, not less than 51 percent of the share capital of the company owned by the government, central, state, together. Then we go for the holding companies, owns more than 15 percent of the nominal value of equity shares, capital of another company or is controlling the composition of the board of directors of another company, example Tata Group. Then we go for the subsidiary company. It is controlled by a holding company since it worth less than 50% normal value of equity share capital. Example, Reebok, Audio, TCS. On the basis of nationality. Domestic companies. It is a company that is incorporated in the country, India itself. Then foreign company. The company which is incorporated outside India but has a place of business in India through its branches or agency is known as foreign company. Next we will see issue of shares at the par. Shares are issued at par when they are issued at a price equal to the face value. Then the shares will be called as issued at par. For example, a share with face value of rupees 10 issued at rupees 10, then the shares will be called issued at par. Next we will see the issue of shares at the premium. Shares are issued at premium to the public by well managed and financially strong companies through the IPO. When the called value is greater than the face value, then the shares are called issued at premium. Security premium reserve account is made for this purpose. This premium can be called with any installment like application money, allotment money, first call money, second call money, etc. In the absence of any information, the amount of premium is to be recorded at the time of allotment. Then we go for the issue of shares at discount. But some changes has made in the Companies Act 2013. As per section 53 of the Companies Act 2013, Companies should be no longer be permitted to issue shares at a discount. The only shares that could be issued at discount are sweet equity, wherein shares are issued to employees or directors in lieu of their service under Section 54 of 2039. The other name given is Employee Stock Option Scheme. Then we go for the call in arrears. If a shareholders default in payment of the call amount due on allotment or any calls according to the terms, the amount not received against amount called is called in arrears. The unpaid or arrear amount on account of allotment or call money or may not be transferred to call in arrears account. Interest, 
the articles of association of the company is silent. Table F of the Companies Act 2013 shall apply, which provide for interest at 10% per annum. Then we go for the call areas. It is a nominal account, nature, because a loss to the company when any shareholder is unable to pay his due amount on any stage. Therefore, it should be debited in the journal entry. Disclosure in the balance sheet. Calling areas is shown in the notes to account on share capital to the balance sheet as a deduction from the amount of subscribed but not fully paid up and a subscribed share capital. Then we go for the call in advance. When a company accepts money from the shareholders against the call not yet made, the amount received in advance is known as call in advance. It may also happen in case of partial or pro rate allotment of shares when the company retains excess amount received on application of shares. Interest. The company pays interest at the rate stated in its articles of association. In the absence of the interest class, in the articles of association, provision of table F of the company Act 2013 shall apply and the company is liable to pay interest 12% per annum on call in advance. Disclosure in the balance sheet. The amount received that is not yet due is a liability of the company. It is shown in the equity and liabilities part of the balance sheet under the head current liabilities and subhead or other current liabilities. Amount of call money received in advance will be given the journey like this. Bank account data to call in advance account. It is adjusted to the respective call is made due. Call in advance account data to final call account. Then you go for the subscription of shares. You go for normal subscription. Sometimes by chance the number of shares supplied by public is same as the number of shares offered by the company. This situation is known as normal subscription. Then we will move for the under subscription. Under subscription is a situation when share applied is less than shares offered. The number of shares applied for is less than the shares offered to the public for subscription. All the application for shares are accepted. Accounting entries are made on the basis of number of shares applied for by the public rather than offered for. Minimum subscription. Section 39. It is amount which must be subscribed by the public according to the company's act. Minimum subscription has been fixed at 90% of the invited amount. Then we go for the war subscription. Shares are issued to the public by well-managed and financially strong company through the IPO. Over subscription is a situation when share apply is greater than share offered. The board of directors cannot allow share more than that offered to the public for subscription. Three alternatives are available to the director in this situation. First alternative, rejection of application. Second alternative, pro rate allotment. Third alternative, full allotment to some applicant. Call under pro rate allotment. Sometimes some shareholders were allotted shares under pro rata system that is they applied for more shares and they were allotted less number of shares therefore their excess application money were transferred towards some due on allotment. Now if any shareholders under pro rata allotment system were unable to pay amount due on allotment then to find this correct amount of arrear on allotment we do pro rata calculation. Then next we will go for poor picture of share. Shareholders fail to pay the call of money on allotment and further call. Shares can be cancelled and amount already paid may be forfeited. The name of the shareholders is removed from the register of members. Amount already received on these shares forfeited by the company. The forfeited amount shall be transferred to the newly opened share forfeiture account. Shareholders fail to pay the called up money on allotment and further calls. Shares can be cancelled and amount already paid may be forfeited. Then we go for the reissue of forfeited shares. Forfeited shares can be reissued at discount. But the amount of discount allowed on the reissue of forfeited shares must not exceed the amount forfeited on reissued shares. Next we will see the journal entries with regard to the issue of shares. First one, when application money received, bank account data to share application account. Narration being application money received. Second one, when application money transferred to allotment, share application account data to share allotment account. Then third one, when excess application money rejected, Share application account data to bank account. Then when application money transferred to share capital. Share application account data to share capital account. Next one. When share allotment made at the part. Share allotment account data to share capital account. When it is made at premium. Share allotment account data to share capital to share premium. When it is made at discount. Share allotment account data. Discount on issue of shares account data to share capital account. Next, when allotment money received, bank account data to share allotment account. When call money made, share respective call account data to share capital account. When call money received, bank account data to share respective call account. When shares forfeited for non-payment of allotment and call money, when they are issued at par, share capital account data to share call account, to share allotment account, to share forfeiture account. When they are issued at premium, 
share capital account data, share premium account data, to share allotment account, to share call account, to share forfeiture account. When they are made a discount, share capital account data, to discount on issue, to share allotment account, to share forfeiture account, to share respective call account. Then when shares are forfeited and reissued, first bank account data, share forfeiture account data, to share capital account. When shares reissued, the profit will be transferred to capital reserve. Share forfeiture account data to capital reserve. 